Hi there. I'm Jason Bullman, Director of Game Design at Paizo and creator of the Pathfinder role-playing game. In today's design music, and I can't believe this, this is design music 10 already. In today's design music, I'm going to ask the, the question that uh, vexes uh, game designers all across the industry, um, which is, when is your game actually done? Uh, it would seem like that question is relatively simple, that once all the pieces are built and you've played it a bunch and you think it's good, you're done. And uh, for some games, that might indeed be the case. But with most games, they have to go through a process of iteration. Uh, you finish designing all the components and pieces, and then you start testing it and you iterate on various components. That makes sense. Uh, certainly, uh, many of you who are familiar with Pathfinder know that we go through a lot of public playtesting, and during that, we're iterating on various parts of the game. So the question is, when are you done iterating? When is the game actually finished? Um, it's a difficult question to answer, actually, and th there isn't really one precise technical definition. It's not like, oh, you've done four iterations, so you're done. Um, it, it really doesn't have a specified end point. Every iteration um, you do on a game makes the game better, and that's worth doing. But there does come a point where every iteration starts giving you a little less, and every time you make substantive changes to the game and put it back out for everyone to look at, they really might not notice as many differences anymore. You're working on smaller and smaller granular pieces, and for many of the people who are playing it, they're not noticing much difference for the amount of effort you're putting in. So the, the question is, is a lot harder to analyze than it would first appear. Um, you can't uh, not iterate your game. You want to constantly be uh, evolving your game while it's going through the design and development process. Um, but every additional iteration may be giving you less and less in return. And you can't ultimately let the perfect be the enemy of the good. You can't drive your game forever through endless iterations trying to make it the absolute perfect expression uh, because that will take you five times longer than when the game was probably good enough to be called done. So figuring out when you're at that point is a real challenge. To figure out how to realize when you're done, it's best to look at what you have left to do in, in two different um, uh, lenses, uh, looking at it through two different ways. And the first one is, with the changes you are making, what is the scope of the impact those changes have? So the impact speaks to like how big, how important are the changes? How critical are they to the key experience of the game? So, you know, if, if um, the game is, you know, one like Pathfinder, where everybody sits around and you're all playing adventurers, going off on epic quests to kill monsters and take their stuff, um, anything that speaks to that key core experience is something you want to make sure that you refine as much as possible, because that's the experience that everyone has. Uh, rules that make that experience better are worth a lot of effort. They are worth sinking the time into them because they're so wide ranging, because they speak to what the game fundamentally wants to be. But on the other end are changes that affect fine details of the game. Little things, small quality of life changes. These can have a really outsized effect on people's overall impression of the game even though they might not realize where it's coming from or, or how it's affecting them. Um, and it, it's made more complicated by the fact that they only really affect those who actually interface with them. So if you're looking for an example in Pathfinder, the rules for something like animal companions are something that only affects a small portion of player characters. That's a more granular rule. Making changes to that might make people who have animal companions certainly happier with their class feature, but it doesn't speak to necessarily the key experience that everyone is having. Now, a lot of these little granular things are things that if they're working right, no one ever notices them at all. Um, uh, 
They're the sort of things that you're, you're never going to get a design award for, uh, you know, your brilliant use of the encumbrance rules. These are the sorts of rules that everyone expects to function. Everybody comes to the game with a certain understanding of how they expect them to work, and they only really notice them if they don't meet that expectation. So either they go unnoticed, or they become kind of a grit in the system, that every time someone has to interact with them, they kind of throw up their hands and are like, oh, this is one part of the game that I find irritating. And it doesn't halt their overall play experience, but it does overall, over time, kind of wear at, at, at your players. So on one hand, we have changes that are, are critical to the game experience, that if you don't get these right, people will not have a good time playing your game. And on the other hand, we have tiny changes that will only affect a few players and might give them some discomfort. The only thing that's tricky about those small ones is that you would think they're not too much work to, to fix, and most of the time they're, they're not, but I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but they are effectively endless. Like, you can make endless changes uh, on, on that end. The big changes, generally speaking, you can tell when you've kind of hit the right point. There's tinkering that can be done, but you, you kind of have a pretty good sense as you're working the game and getting feedback when you've made most of the large changes. So is that when you're done? When you made most of the large changes and you've done enough small changes that you're satisfied? Not quite. The other way to look at all the changes you have to make is the scope of work. How much work does each change require you to make? On one hand, you have the impact of the change. On the other hand, you have the amount of work it takes to make that change manifest. So you would think looking at it, that these two things are proportional, that things that affect the core experience are really big, and things that affect the granular experience are really small. That's not always the case. Sometimes these things are the exact opposite of what you would expect. Most of the time they follow that formula, but they're not always that way. Some of the things that have a huge impact on the game are actually relatively easy to fix. Um, I'm thinking back to our Pathfinder 2 playtest recently. Um, changing out uh, the death and dying rules has a big impact on the game. It affects everyone who drops to, to negative hit points, which, you know, can be everyone at the table. Um, but ultimately, changing out those rules is a relatively small scope of work. It's a couple paragraphs of text. Uh, there's a few other rules that plug into it. It has a big outsized impact on the game experience, but the actual amount of work it took for us to make that change happen, other than a lot of, you know, meetings where we were arguing back and forth about what direction to go, the amount of actual typing and editing was relatively small. So the scope of work was small for a big scope of change. Um, in other cases, you might just want to clarify a term, right? Um, you might want to change uh, one element uh, to another thing. You might, in, in some of those cases, it might be as simple as a, as a find and replace job in Word. Some of those are very simple to do, but they might greatly improve people's understanding of the game. Um, you know, I'm thinking of the word, you know, like we, we use the word bolstered right now in the game, and there's some debate over whether or not we want to continue using that word. Well, changing it might greatly improve people's understanding of what we're trying to mean, and it affects a lot of people, so it's kind of a bigger change. But changing that is almost simple. Um, there are a few ramifications of, of doing it that way, but ultimately the amount of work is relatively small. I mean, uh, assuming you don't mess it up, right? There are some few classic examples of this. I'm thinking of the old, it was the magic encyclopedias from second edition, uh, where they went and did a find replace to change the word mage to wizard everywhere. And that worked just fine until they missed that mage is also a component of the word damage. So the book is filled with da wizards, uh, you know, take 1d6 da wizard, um, so you got to be careful with those sorts of things, but overall, they're not a huge amount of work. Now, on the opposite side, some of the small things can take a huge amount of time to fix. The scope of, of work on those can be very, very large. Um, you know, just going through and changing how we formatted spells, um, is the sort of thing that, yes, it touches on a lot of players, but the overall impact of the change of how we format the information up at the top really isn't hugely impactful. All the information was still there. We were just arranging it a little differently so that it was a little cleaner to understand. 
it wasn't the sort of thing that everyone went, oh, brilliant, bravo. Um, but it's the sort of thing that we felt was important enough for us to do, but the amount of effort it took to do it when you're doing that to 700 spells is, is quite a bit. So um, on one hand, things that can be really important to the game might not take much work. They usually do, but they might not. And on the other hand, some of the small things uh, might take a huge amount of time. So when exactly are you done? Is it, is it, is it when your, uh, the scope of, of impact is taken care of, when it's the scope of work is taken care of? The truth is it's a little bit of both. Um, you're done when the core experience sings. It's kind of the best way I have to describe it. As a, as a designer, you kind of get to that point when someone sits down to play your game and it performs as they expect, they have a good time, and what they're doing is what you envisioned the game uh, to be. You know you've kind of hit the right spot. When everything is kind of coming together in a way that feels right. There's a, a natural balance. You know you're done when the problems you have left with the little details no longer are detracting from that core experience. When those have become so small and so uh, minuscule that any inconvenience they cause is easily brushed aside as the players get back to the fun, as they get back to the core experience. You know you're done when the changes you have left cost too great a time for too little impact. You know you're done when it's right. It's not the most useful answer, but if you've ever gone through a lengthy game design process, you'll know what I meant. Well, that's about all I have on this topic for this week. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe changing up the schedule of these. Saturdays and Wednesdays uh, are a little rough. Uh, I think the ones that I release on Saturdays aren't getting as much uh, viewership just because folks are out on the weekends having a good time. So I might be shifting some of my days here in the future. If you have any thoughts on that, feel free to uh, leave some comments uh, down below. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more uh, content like this from me. Uh, I'm still working on that t uh, series of GM tips, and I hope you'll uh, stay tuned for that. Now get out there and make some great games.